Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you can see it and you can purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. And today we are discussing one of the biggest and boldest watch dial combinations in the Rolex back catalog. This is the Rolex Oyster Perpetual Datejust 2 116333 in Rolex 904L proprietary anti-corrosive steel and Rolex own yellow gold. Both smelted at Rolex's own factories. This is a timepiece that strikes not just with its metal combo, but that potent dial which like, looks like the evil fraternal twin of the Rolex Wimbledon dial. So on my wrist, 16 centimeters in circumference, it's a big watch. Though a 41, it has the wrist presence of a 42 or a 43. You really get an eyeful and a wristful with this broad timepiece. It's not thick, however. 11.9 millimeters thick. It will slide easily underneath the cuff. My cuff is kind of tight. You can see this watch will have no trouble clearing it. Lug to lug it's 49.5 millimeters, but we're measuring end link to end link, in which case the watch is 50.7 millimeters across the wrist. The spacing between the lugs was well chosen when this watch bowed at Basel 2009. 21 millimeters is a good match for the size of the watch. It gives it a planted feel and a broad stance. The timepiece features a three link Rolex Oyster bracelet, as there was no Jubilee available on the 2009 to 2015 date just two. And just to get a better sense of the difference between the two, big and bold, this is the Oyster, this is the Jubilee. Now you can see that the Oyster, all in steel and gold, all with solid links, is a very hefty piece. Solid end links, solid center links, polished yellow gold, satin outer flanks, outer faces in high polish, removable links set with screws, and a high grade clasp with a beacon hook locking system that's actually a vertical trigger. Not friction fit, so this is quite secure when closed. All polish inside, this was a premier Rolex watch. Straight through yellow with satin finished steel outer flanks, you can see there is a Easy link system, which is basically the equivalent of adding or removing one five millimeter standard link. And then there are different anchoring positions inside the clasp. Three different anchoring positions so you can restation the root of the bracelet for a better fit. Now the timepiece does have a graceful case. Though it's a big watch, it's not an artless thing. The case band is fluid. It's graceful. It's slim. It's not the super case from the GMTs, the Sea Dwellers, the Submariners, and the Explorer 2s. It looks very much like a bigger version of the Daytona or the Datejust or the Daydate, which is to say it does have the grace and the credentials aesthetically to work as a dress watch, albeit a bold one. The bezel faceted almost like a gem. It's, it's a large and reflective surface that dazzles in bright light. The faceting of a Rolex bezel in gold is bigger and broader than what you'll get, for example, on an Omega. If you look at something like a Constellation Globemaster, this is more like a coining pattern, whereas Rolex is almost going for a gem-like faceting. Now the dial, we need to talk about it because it's punchy. If you're familiar with the Wimbledon dial, this is like that only I would say, realistically, more forceful and more intense. You have on the Wimbledon a gray base with the same index pattern, 9 o'clock and the 5-point coronet at 12. The Wimbledon will have Romans transferred with lacquer in green and a gray ruthenium base. Here, or it's actually a dark rhodium. Here, you have something that is a matte black. It is almost charcoal. You have a gilt-style gold outline to black lacquered transferred Roman numerals. It's a subdued look and an imposing look. You still have the same combination of loomed hour and minute hand with loom 9 o'clock, but it's definitely a more punchy and masculine look versus the more universal Wimbledon style. Oversized date magnifier. Always a Rolex hallmark, but it's just more at home on the 41 millimeter face of a date just two or a day date two. And you can see with the dial able to open up and breathe, it doesn't crowd quite like it does on the 40 millimeter sports watches or heaven help us, the 36 millimeter date justs. Also, Twin lock crown, screw down, 100 meters water resistant underneath. Caliber 3136, a unique caliber with an oversized date wheel, only ever used on this reference. 48 hour power reserve, automatic winding, 28,800 vibration per hour beat rate, stop seconds, quick set date. Shock resistant with a full balance bridge and a free sprung index. Anti-magnetic with the parachrome blue hairspring and able to take and hold precise regulation in many positions thanks to an overcoil architecture to its hairspring. That overcoil architecture which ensures concentric beating in any orientation with respect to gravity, helping the watch to earn its COSC chronometer certification. This is a timepiece that has all of the toys. 
Rolex shock protection, and 31 jewels. It's a manufacturer movement that is tank tough and very precise. This is a watch that fires on all cylinders. Admittedly, an unconventional combination of steel, gold, and dial, it remains one of the most imposing and forceful Rolex dress watches of the modern era. See it and make it yours on the watch box. And we're back with the Rolex Oyster Perpetual Date Just 2. You see, loomed index at 9 and then hour and minute. 